So we're out here again in the hinterland of Byron Bay on the north coast of New South Wales and as you can tell it's pretty late at night. Um, and we've had a bit of rain recently and what that means is, as you can probably hear behind me, there are a lot of frogs out at the moment. So what I'm going to be doing basically in this video is just having a quick look around the area um, and trying to see if I can find um, some frogs. All frogs are very delicate. Um, they breathe through their skin in a process called cutaneous respiration. Uh, which means that their skin is incredibly delicate, it absorbs everything it touches. So if you've got even the slightest bit of nasty chemicals on your hands, that can be really bad for the frogs. So my first bit of advice would be, if you don't have to handle the frog, don't, because handling them at, in, in any way can be very bad for them. But if you do have to handle them, make sure that your hands are wet. I've got a water bottle with me here, um, and every time I see a frog, I'm just going to pour some over my hands um, to make sure that my hands are wet when I'm ready to pick up the frog. You don't want to be using soap or anything because even soap is bad for frogs. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go try and find some frogs. So this property we're on actually has a pool which attracts a lot of frogs and as you can hear behind me, that's the sound of a bleating tree frog. So that's the first frog we're going to try and catch. I'm just going to wet my hands now. And then let's go in try and catch one. So this is a bleating tree frog. This is a small one. They don't get much bigger than this though. I'm pretty sure this one's a female. So it won't be making that really loud noise you can hear in the background, which is the males trying to attract a mate. Um, now these guys will make that sound during the summer months, trying to attract a female. And that's basically all there is to these guys. They're fairly common on the <laughs> east coast of Australia. This guy's trying to get up my arm. But yeah, that's all about, well, that's about all there is to it. So I'll let this guy, oh, before he jumps all the way up me, get on his way. There he is. Let's put him back. <laughs> or her back. Oh, shit. Oh, he's on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so I've just seen a frog in there that I haven't seen in the last few days. Um, so I'm just going to quickly try and grab it. I've already washed my hands and I'll try and show it off to you. So this little fella, it took me a while to catch him. This is the first one I've seen here in, in the four days I've been here. It's a broad palmed rocket frog. Now there's not much to say about these guys, I don't know much, too much about them other than uh, I don't think this is their breeding season. I could be wrong about that, but since I haven't seen a few of them around, that's probably correct. I'm not sure how big these guys can grow, but I'll put it on the screen now and I'll let him be. Because I've been trying to chase him for a while. <laughs> that took a while to catch, but let's move on to the next ones. So you can hear the bleating tree frogs in the background, uh, but I've just found something that's really exciting. So I'm just going to walk my hands again. Jesus. And then I'll grab this fella for you. Let's go. So this is a green tree frog. This is a really big one as well. They are one of the biggest species, if not the biggest species of native frog in Australia. Uh, but this is a big one in particular. He looks fairly old. His skin colour is a bit darker than normal. These guys are one of the most famous um, frogs, not only in Australia, but to keep as pets overseas. Um, they're famously timid around humans. So it took me a few goes to wrangle this guy in, but at the moment he's very calm. So we've had to move away a bit because the bleating tree frog was uh, making such a loud noise. But I was saying that these guys are so big that the normal frog diet of insects, little bugs, um, is not enough. These guys can eat small mammals. They've even been um, recorded as eating bats. As I said, these guys are really popular as pets, not only in Australia but overseas. And they're one of the most recognisable frog species, let alone tree frog species, in the world. So I'll let you have a good look at him here. He seems pretty happy. What a beautiful specimen that is. That's absolutely glorious. You can see the white speckles on his belly. This guy is very old. You can even see his eardrum there. There's all the details because he's so big. What a beautiful frog. So I've just seen another frog, well, technically a frog, uh, that I thought we would see tonight, but I didn't really want to see. So I'm just going to wet my hands again. And grab him. So as I was saying, this is one guy that I did think we were going to see here, but I wasn't too happy about it. This is a cane toad. These are not native to Australia. Uh, they're actually native to South America. Um, and you may be aware of the fact that these guys were actually introduced to Australia to help uh, eat 
the bugs that were plaguing the, the cane plantations in northern Australia. Unfortunately, not only were these guys unable to actually eat the bugs because these guys live on the ground and the bugs lived at the top of the cane, uh, they also spread like wildfire across the country. They now live all over northern Australia and have reached nearly as far down as Sydney. You may be wondering why is that a problem? They're just frogs. The problem is because of this lump on the side of its head here. That's called a paratoid gland and it produces a toxin called a bufotoxin. Now since this is not native to Australia, the native carnivores which normally eat frogs like quolls, uh, owls, snakes, they, they will eat this frog and die because of the toxin. And that's a huge, huge, huge issue uh, to which a solution is yet to be found. Um, now this guy in particular is not very big. These cane toads can grow really quite big. And around here, I have seen a few, but they're not in the massive numbers that they are in the very north of Australia. So these guys are a prime example of why introducing a species for any reason is a really, really, really bad idea. Alright, so that'll do it for today. I'm going to head inside and wash my hands thoroughly, which I really recommend you do after handling frogs because uh, they can carry salmonella and other diseases, especially the cane toad because it's got uh, poisonous skin. I think that was a pretty successful frog hunt. I was pretty sure we were going to find the two tree frog species, the bleeding tree frog and the green tree frog, and the cane toad, but it was a bit of a surprise uh, to get the rocket frog. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Um, thanks for watching and...